Now let's move from the Performance Parameter page of the EXS to the Edit page. So we click the Edit button that's above the Level Fader. We get this page. So we want to look at two concepts, and let's start with the easy one. I want to take a cymbal crash, and I want to patch it to the keyboard so that I have an entire keyboard full of cymbal crashes. So the first thing EXS wants to know is, where do you want this on the keyboard? And that's called a zone. So we'll go to Zone and New Zone, and the keystroke for that is Control-Z, and its native pitch is going to be C3, and it's going to be patched all the way from C-2 all the way up to G8. Let's double-click in the name field where it says Zone 1, and we'll call this CYMB1, just to give it a more proper name than Zone 1. So now we have a zone, but we don't have a sound. To the right of the name is a triangle. Let's hold that down and we can load audio sample. And the keystroke for that is Control F. So I'm going to navigate to my working files and choose crash symbol number one. There's a preview down here, tells me a little bit about the sound, and I can play it. The hide used audio files is handy because as you're building a patch, it will tell you what you've already used and kind of gray those out, so that's handy. So we'll say open, and now it's on the zone. Now with the pitch button checked, its native pitch is C3, but as I move around the keyboard, I'm just gonna go in the direction of C minus two. We'll be transposing the sound from its native pitch to whichever key we choose in real time. Now let me go the other direction. I'll go up. So we can get some really interesting effects here. If I uncheck pitch, then no matter what key I hit, any key that I hit will give me the native pitch from here. So I'll put pitch back on. One shot means that it will play the sample from beginning to end, no matter how long I hold the key. So I'll just reach here and tap C3. But because one shot is on, it's gonna play it all the way to the end, and then it'll release that key. So long sample. Speaking of long sample, I can reverse the sample. So now I'm going to hold down the key. So if you look down here, you'll see when I start, and then you'll hear the sound show up. No sound yet. That's that long tail that's built into the cymbal crash. Here it comes. So a cymbal has a lot of attack and a very long decay. So when we reverse that, we put a giant front end onto the sound. And one more thing I should point out. I'll undo reverse here, is that if pitch is checked and you're taking this far from its native pitch, we call that aliasing. And if there's blank space before the sound actually hits, that will become magnified as you move further down. Okay, so we have one sound and it's patched across the entire keyboard for any velocity from zero to 127. Let's make it a little more complex and add another zone. Zone, new, this time we'll add another audio sample, symbol two. So now we have a decision to make. Presumably we don't want both symbol crashes whenever we hit a key. So we want to assign symbol one to some group of keys and symbol two to the remaining group of keys. And we do that with the key range. So let's take symbol one up to, just clicking and holding here. I have them both selected and I'll fix that in a second. Let's take it up to around B3, and then let's click on this guy, and I want him to be at C3, and I don't want B3, I want actually B2. You can see the lines crossing at the bottom there, and you can tell if you have overlap, and now I think I've got it. The symbol number one is here, symbol number two is here, and they're both patched to full velocity. Here's B2, here's C3, and each has its place on the keyboard now. 
So that's one concept, dividing your keyboard up in terms of pitch. There's another concept we'll take a look at in the next movie.